Hello everyone, this is Denim Darlin and today I will be talking about Red Wing Heritage men's boots and their counterpart in the Red Wing Heritage women's line. I have three sets of boots here. I'm going to start with this one. This is the men's 875 uh, Classic Mock and this is the women's 3375 Classic Mock. Both are six inches tall. Both come in the Oral Legacy leather. Uh, the men's retails for $279.99 and the women's retails for $200. $89.99. Where does the price difference come from? So the men's is made from bull leather, so male cowhide. It is more stiff and it does feel a little thicker than the women's. The women's is a female cowhide. It's easier to break in. It's very supple leather. Both are full grain oils leather. Um, in the insole of the boot, the men's is all leather. It's a leather insole followed by cork underneath. Neither one of these boots has a steel shank. The women's is a leather layer on the insole. Underneath the leather there is a poron, which is a very bouncy rubber-like material, and underneath that there is cork. Both offer a leather uh, welt, and both are 360-degree uh, Goodyear welted boots. The price difference also comes from the sole. The men's boots have a, a traction tread rubber sole, and the women's sole is a polyurethane traction tread sole. What that means is that because the men's is rubber, it's like an eraser. It just shaves down easier than the women's. The women's still actually last longer than the men's. So you would have to resole the men's boot sooner than the women's boot. Both boots offer nickel eyelets. Uh, the men's boot is made on a 23 last, and the women's boot is made on a 105 last. The last is comparable to the men's. It's just been slimmed down to accommodate a woman's foot better. And the last of a boot is just the way that the boot wraps around your foot. Um, so the instep of the boot, uh, the height in the toe box, um, and the overall width of the boot. That's the last of the boot. Uh, the men's boot is offered in three different widths. D width, E width, and double E width. And the women's boot is offered in B width. The B width is a regular width for women, and the D width is a regular width for men. Both boots also offer a Puritan triple stitch. So this is the men's uh, blacksmith and this is a women's silversmith. The men's blacksmith stands at six inches tall and the women's stands at seven inches tall. The women's has a pool tab and the men's does not. Both boots offer eyelets and speed hooks. However, because the women's is taller, the women's has an extra speed hook than the men's and also an extra eyelet than the men's. The men's boot is made from bull leather, so again, male cowhide, and the women's boot is made from female cowhide. Extremely supple, extremely soft, very easy to break in. The men's blacksmith in charcoal rough and tough is model number 3341, and the women's silversmith in copper rough and tough is model number 3362. So the description of the leather um, on the Red Wing site is that this is a Nubuck waxed leather and that this is a Nubuck oiled waxed leather. Both boots offer a Vibram 430 mini lug outsole. So a very nice grip on both. And they have a three and a quarter degree welt um, or a 270 degree welt. So that means that the Goodyear welt comes three quarters of the way around the boot. It ends at the heel. The interesting part about the men's versus the women's is that the men's boot has nails nailed through the outside of the heel. As you can see the holes and you can't see it through the women's. On the women's boot, the nails are nailed from the inside of the boot. Um, in order to keep nails in the men's from hitting your foot, there are washers in the heel of the boot. So the washers are holding down the nails. Also, the nails are bent once they're hammered in. Um, on the women, since they're nailed from the inside, the nails just bend over. If that makes the weight of this boot heavier than the women's boot, the addition of washers. Also, uh, to protect your foot from the nails and just to hide the nails for aesthetics, there is an extra piece of vegetable tan leather in the heel of the men's boots that cover the nails from showing. Uh, something else that I found pretty neat is that I reached out to Red Wing Heritage women and I asked them what the heck this material on the heel of the boot is right above the Vibram heel. I asked what this piece is 
And these are there in the women's boots, it's plastic. And then the men's, it's leather board. I don't know why they put plastic in the women's heel and leather board in the men's. I wish that they put leather board in the heel of the women's also. I feel like it, it sounds better to have a leather board than plastic. So I'm not sure why they decided to do that. The price of both of these boots is $299.99 and both boots offer a steel shank. The men's blacksmith originally comes with cotton coated wax laces and the women's come with black and brown Taslan laces. Then we have the Iron Ranger in the men's and women's line. The men's Iron Ranger is also heavier than the women's Iron Ranger and that's because just like the blacksmith the nails are nailed from the outside and the men's and there are washers to hold the nails in place and then there's that extra piece of vegetable tan leather in the insole of the boot covering the nails from showing whereas in the women's boots the nails are nailed from the inside of the boot the men's iron ranger retails for 329 dollars and 99 cents and the women's iron ranger retails for 319 dollars and 99 cents I don't know why the men's is pricier than the women's. I did reach out to Red Wing Heritage Women, uh, but they haven't given me a response yet on why the men's is slightly pricier than the women's. Maybe, um, I would say maybe it's the addition of the washers, maybe that extra piece of vegetable tan leather in, in the insole, but these also have washers and these also have an extra piece of vegetable tan leather on the insole, so I don't know. Uh, both of these boots, have a double leather toe cap and this is an old model so this model has um, a cork sole but should grab this one right here this is my uh, oxblood men's iron ranger so the iron rangers are no longer made with cork they are now made with a vibram 430 mini outsole both of these boots are three and a quarter goodyear welted so that means that the Goodyear well only goes three quarters of the way around. Both of these offer nickel eyelets and uh, nickel speed hooks. And the Oxblood offers brass eyelets and brass speed hooks. The men's uh, heel has leatherboard right above the Vibram rubber heel and the women's has plastic. On the inside, the men's uh, boots have leather, a vegetable tanned heel to protect from the nails. Um, underneath the leather, there is cork, a steel shank, and then uh, there's a leather welt. The women's have a leather insole with pour on underneath, which is a rubber substance once again. Underneath that, there's cork and a steel shank. The Men's Iron Ranger in the Amber Harness Leather, model number 8111, has a full grain oiled leather. And the Women's Iron Ranger in Black Boundary, model number 3366, has a full grain leather. The Men's Iron Ranger comes in a D and a double E width, and the Women's Iron Ranger is only offered in a B width. The Men's is made on a number 8 last, and the Women's is made on a 106 last which is comparable to the men's, just that it's been slimmed down again to fit a woman's foot. Lastly, I'll mention the 877. So I don't have it with me, but the counterpart in the Red Wing Heritage women's line to the 877 um, is very similar, just that it's also made with female cowhide and it offers speed hooks at the top, which helps put them on a lot easier. Uh, these are kind of a pain in the butt to put on when I'm in a hurry because I do have to remove the laces from four of the speed hooks to get my foot inside of the boot and when I'm in a hurry I'm like struggling to put the laces back inside of the eyelets but I don't mind I love these boots so much and I would rather struggle with eyelets than have speed hooks but I know that a lot of y'all out there have replaced your eyelets with speed hooks for ease of putting the boot on. Um, also in the women's model it just like with the 3375, it's made with a polyurethane traction tread sole, whereas the men's is made with a traction tread sole made out of rubber.
And the women's is model number 3427. This boot is made on a number 23 last, and the women's model is made on a number 105 last. Uh, other than that, both uh, eight inch mocks are the same. Women's Red Wing Heritage boots usually run true to size. In some lasts, you might find yourself sizing half a size up. Uh, just for ease of break-in, but in most of the boots you'll be true to size. Most men's Red Wing Heritage boots run anywhere between a half size big to a full size and a half big. It depends on the width of your foot usually, but most men go up about a full size. I always recommend getting fitted if it's your very first time purchasing boots, but the consensus is that they at least run a half size to a full size and a half big. Alrighty, everybody. I hope that this video was was informative. It was not the easiest video for me to make because I was trying my best to be very efficient with information and I didn't want to confuse myself or you guys. I hope I didn't over talk, but I was really excited to make this video because a few of you reached out and asked me to make a video in which I spoke about all of the differences in the men's and the women's line of boots. I'm pretty certain I covered everything. If I left anything out or if there was something that y'all wish I would have mentioned, please let me know. I really do care about giving you guys information that is valuable to you. As always, I have a lot of fun making these videos. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to my channel. This is Denim Darlin and I plan on making more content that you guys find of value. Take care and thank you very much for watching.